Hey guys, Nash is back with another quick video. Um, a couple days, weeks? I'm a bit confused on time. Um, I got a request to do a video about Chaos Magic in particular because of this book that, I don't know if you can see, by Peter Carroll. Um, and if you want to study Chaos Magic more on your own, this is probably one of the best books you're going to come across on the subject. Um, aside from that, I just figured I would do a quick video about what exactly Chaos Magic is on a base level so that you can have kind of a rudimentary understanding going into it if you do choose to pick up this book. And again, I have, in my copy of this book, I have, wait, I have underlines, notes, page bookmarks. I have a lot of things. There's a, there, there's a lot of pages and then I have footnotes and all that nifty stuff that I put in this book. <laughs> um, I wrote, actually, I actually compiled notes. So I wrote about a brief one page summary, um, kind of touching on specific points so that you can get a better idea of exactly what it is fundamentally. So Chaos Magic is a very interesting system of magic that can be both beneficial and confusing. <laughs> um, by ne definition, Chaos Magic really doesn't have a set definition because as a practice it has no common components that really tie it together as are common in other branches of magic. Chaos Magic is about using practices that suit your needs in a particular given time regardless of previous methods you've used. So that means if you use one particular method on Thursday, Friday, you can completely throw away Thursday's practice and start with something completely different. It's at its core very chaotic, but that being said, chaos doesn't necessarily mean destruction. Chaos doesn't have to be a destructive force. Chaos is a building block of the universe, and it is a needed component in felicitating life. Um, similar to eclectic systems of magic, um, chaos magic, um, you borrow from other practices and traditions as it suits your needs. As opposed to eclectic branches where you kind of consolidate different ideas and practices to create your own path and stick to that relatively for the entirety of your practice. So you you create your own ideas stemming from other traditions and you kind of use that as a foundation. And it typically stays the same for a long time. It's There's a foundation that you stick to. Chaos Magic is different isn't that there's no real foundation. It's always changing and adapting to what you need at that time. So Chaos Magic is not about being confined by one or two rigid structures, but from freeing oneself to learn and grow in a manner that suits you in the here and now. So that means ideas that you had on Thursday mean nothing to Friday's version of you. Um, further, it's like um, the power of belief is something that really has a unique sense in Chaos Magic. Belief is important in all magical branches that you decide to study, but what makes the power of belief in Chaos Magic unique is that you need to be able to believe in a particular practice one day and then completely change your mind the next day. Just basically Thursdays you needs to believe one set of things, but then you can completely do a 180 and be like, no, I need this thing now. Thursday's in the back of my mind. Thursday is not even a it's not even a second thought. We're not thinking about Thursday anymore. We're here now. This is what's working for me. <clears throat> so um, one of the examples I wrote down is if you use a ritual knife, for instance, and you are deciding to place um, your belief in the use of this particular item. This item is suiting your needs now. The next day, you might choose to completely just get rid of that item because you no longer need it. So Chaos Magic forces practitioners to be able to cast aside old ideas without clinging to them. It has It's a constant, fluidly changing thing. Um, you have to be able to adapt and change to suit your needs. So really it's good old research. <laughs> it's, it's these practitioners 
constantly researching new ideas, building, growing, but not hesitating to like go of old ideas, replace them with new ideas. And if you have to come back to old ideas, that's fine, but you have to be constant and fluid and changing. It's, it's never set in stone. There is no foundation. So that's what can make it confusing to a lot of people. And it can be difficult for those who like to have structure in their practices. In a way, it can also be a bit simpler. Like ceremonial magic, for instance, has a lot of concrete beliefs. It has a lot of occult teachings and rules that need to be followed in a structure in order for the cere in order for the ceremonial magic to work as instructed. Chaos magic doesn't place much emphasis on ritual or, or ceremony. If a ceremony helps you get into the right mind space to perform your magic then it is a valid tool that you can use. But it's more for just aiding you. There is no set in stone way to do it. It's a tool that you can use, but the tool can be changed and melded to be what you need as long as it helps you to achieve the goal you're trying to achieve. So really, in Chaos Magic, there is no ultimate truth. There is no this is the rule, this is what you go by. It's, it's constantly changing and evolving, and no two practitioners are going to have the same anything. So um, another good point is chaos magic can enable practitioners to change not only their beliefs in, in magic itself in, in, and in practices, but in completely different beliefs um, with different gods, different deities, and things like that. So if you're working with Odin, one day you can switch and go to a completely different pantheon if it suits your needs, <laughs> um, and you place your belief in that. It's, it's not so much as in, oh, I particularly follow these deities, it's utilizing the deities in a respectful way and putting your belief in them to achieve a goal that you want. However, don't, don't just go and be like, hey, yo, Athena, I need something. No, it's, it's a respectful way of asking other gods, other powers, other deities for help within your magical practice in a respectful way. But it requires the practitioner to be fluid and be like, I'm not, I'm not s strictly on this one set path. Like, for instance, I'm Norse pagan, so I obviously work primarily with Nordic gods. That's not to say that I don't believe that anyone else's gods don't have the as a similar power or power to do and give aid to people who call upon them. Of course they do, as is my particular belief. And in a way that goes with chaos magic is in you ask other powers for assistance if you need it. And that's why you really can't be very close-minded as a chaos magic practitioner because it requires you to be constantly open-minded about everything all at once. <laughs> That's probably why not a lot of people tend to go to it because it can be very it can be very challenging and yet very simplistic because it's a it's a relatively simple idea of being fluid and and changing but it's harder to do in practice than it is to say and give instruction on. Chaos practitioners constantly have to decondition um, their minds to take away old ideas that maybe they have a particular hold on, like old patterns of doing things, old beliefs that you might get, it's, it's like getting stuck in a rut where you do the same thing constantly. It's, it's a, uh, a pattern that you fall into and you're, you're constantly doing it this way. Chaos magic challenges you to do something completely different. Constantly do something completely different. Don't fall into a pattern. Constantly reevaluate your ideas, your, your mind, your situation, your practice. It's really, I mean, it's really a mental discipline as well as a magical practice because it's constantly challenging your mind to think differently. If you if you pick up this book and read it, because Peter Carroll is actually the one uh, credited with coining the term chaos magic, um, I mean, it breaks everything down. <laughs> I mean, you, you, I mean, it goes into depth about so many, so many things, which is why I have so many notes 
and I mean it really you're probably not gonna find a better guide out there because it it's it's I mean, and it's a lot of reading. I mean, it's it's a complex book because Peter Carroll is very structured and not st structured, but it's it's almost mathematical in the way that he does things. So me not being a very mathematical person, it <laughs> it takes a bit to adjust to to reading it, but it's it's fascinating in its own right and. I really don't think that you would find a better guide if you really want to learn the fundamentals of chaos magic. This is going to be your best bet. Really that is probably the most composed video I made because I actually made notes and remembered to read them. So I hope that this kind of gave a brief summary because there's a lot, I mean there's a lot more that goes into it, but at a base level if if what I said interests you, delving more into it is going to be for you. You're going to want to learn more about it. But because it's so fluid and ever-changing, there's no real how-to guide. I mean, you can, there's, there's fundamentals, and I mean, this book will lay it all out. I mean, different ways of doing things, changing the way you think, and all that. It goes into depth, a lot of depth, and again, it's probably going to require a lot of reading and rereading and note taking. Because it is so fluid and ever changing, there's not really a how to guide, how to get started, because it's constantly learning about other practices, incorporating them into your own, and being able to take this idea that you spent so long researching, throwing it in the garbage, and finding another one and being like, oh, this is what suits me today. It's, it's demanding, and it can be very difficult. But ultimately, it's rewarding in that it will take lots of time and practice and effort. And, I mean, no one's probably ever going to succeed 100%. But that's what makes it so great, because the harder you work at it, the more fruitful your practice becomes, the more you succeed and achieve. I mean, it's like, it pays off in the end, because you're like, I did this. I, I, I did all my research. I now know all these things. I'm able to fluidly change my practices, and it's, it's ultimately overall very rewarding. So I hope that you found this video somewhat helpful, and if Chaos Magic sounds like a path that you would like to learn more about, I can't recommend this book further enough, and I will probably put an Amazon link in the description because I got this book off of Amazon. Good old Amazon. So, um, next I'm probably going to be doing a video about um, Norse paganism, more specifically uh, Loki and his children, um, probably a bit about the Jotnar as well, because that is how I started on the Norse paganism path. Um, I started out as uh, calling myself Lokian, which most people probably have never heard of, so I call myself Norse Pagan now as more of a... nobody knows what Lokian is, so I'm just gonna say Norse Pagan because it's easier. So, um, next I will probably be doing a video on that and different aspects of that if anyone is interested in learning about Loki, um, because I know a lot of people who practice Norse Paganism tend to demonize him. Uh, yeah, so don't do that. But um, aside from that, I'm also going to try to get another New Vegas video out eventually because I hated the ending. So if anyone's interested in watching me fail at playing New Vegas, um, I'll probably have that one up at some point. Um, so yeah, stick around, like, subscribe, please. I need friends. Anyway, that'll do it for this video and I will see you in the next one.